Hi everyone, Swiftjar here. Hello. Today, we're jumping into another Mario Party Superstars video. Thanks to the September Nintendo Direct that aired on the 25th and the official Mario Party Superstars Japanese website launching, we'll provide over a load of information to dissect. I recently uploaded a Horrorland analysis in comparison to its original board on the Nintendo 64, so make sure you go and check that out by clicking the link on screen or check the description down below. This video is going to be the second part of that series, where I do an analysis and comparison for the confirmed boards in Mario Party Superstars. Today, I'll be going into a detailed analysis by comparing Yoshi's Tropical Island to the original in Mario Party 1 on the Nintendo 64. However, before we start, if you're new to the channel, I'm giving away a copy of Mario Party Superstars when the game launches. To be eligible, all you have to do is be subscribed to my YouTube channel. Bonus entries are also given if you follow me on Twitter, Twitch, and are in the newly created Discord. I recently started up my Discord to be a great place to chat all things Mario Party Superstars and Nintendo in general, so you're all welcome to the hideout. All the links are in the description below. Yoshi's Tropical Island was highly speculated prior to the announcement. This was thanks to the Treehouse footage which showed off this pink Yoshi sticker alongside a Monty Mole sticker. This Monty Mole at the time was being connected to the already confirmed board being Woody Woods which led people to speculate on this pink Yoshi sticker, which ironically had a strong correlation to Yoshi's Tropical Island in Mario Party 1, as the Yoshi stuck on the island in that board was pink. Ironically enough, it turns out this was the case. Yoshi's Tropical Island is in fact going to be a board in Mario Party Superstars. Yoshi's Tropical Island at first glance looks gorgeous, and it appears to stay true to the original. When I first saw this board in the trailer, the first thought I had was this board has so much character and is exactly what I wanted in Super Mario Party's board, Mega Fruit Paradise. Yoshi's Tropical Island makes you feel like you're part of the island, which is inhabited with Yoshi's. It'll be interesting to see if the backstory is still present from the original Mario Party. The Yoshi is still sitting in the middle of the board and appears to be separated with Cheap Cheats lurking underneath, instead of the original's whirlpools, so maybe it is. However, the blue Yoshi doesn't appear to be distraught like in the original. He can be found sleeping on a piece of fruit on Cantaloupe Island, while the original pink Yoshi has now been replaced with a red Yoshi, just chilling on the island in the middle all by himself. He doesn't look too distressed to me. As mentioned, Yoshi's Tropical Island originates from Mario Party 1. If you're unfamiliar with Yoshi's Tropical Island, at first glance it can come across as rather bland and small compared to other N64 boards. But don't be fooled, this board is not bland despite the smaller size. It's the opposite actually. It's completely nuts. This board is living proof that a smaller board can be packed with lots of creative content. Here there are two major islands, one being Watermelon Island and the other being Cantaloupe Island, which you can swap between. On one island is Bowser who steals your coins, with the other island is Toadette who gives you a star. The main gimmick here is to do with the happening space. Whenever someone lands on a happening space, Bowser and Toadette's positioning on the board will flip. So it's extremely random which one you'll get, and you can get absolutely trolled or be really lucky. Most importantly, this board can involve a lot of strategy. In Yoshi's Tropical Island, whenever you cross the bridge from one side of the island to the other, you need to pay the swamps. Every time someone crosses, they charge an extra coin. So if you have a lot of money and your opponents behind you have little money, pay them more than your opponent and they will not be able to follow you to the star loop. This is an amazing concept, which I don't think should be tampered with, especially because of how easy it seems to farm coins in Mario Party Superstars, and with the introduction to lucky spaces to these boards. I think this concept can really help to balance the economy out here. Speaking of spaces, unfortunately due to the footage from both the Nintendo Direct and also the Japanese website, we can't see the entirety of Yoshi's Tropical Island. Yoshi's Tropical Island and Mario Party Superstars have a total of 53 spaces we can identify. 49 of these spaces we can see from this screenshot, which shows us almost the entire board. However, with a bit of extra research, we can identify an extra 3 spaces from this clip. Here Waluigi is going past the left signpost of Watermelon Island, which shows us an extra 3 spaces. We couldn't see this in the original screenshot. Secondly, this image on the Japanese website shows us a better look at the top of Cantaloupe Island, where we can now see this item space, as well as the original pink Yoshi, who is now in a yellow floaty. Nice. This brings us to a total of 53 spaces we can see. This is made up by 24 blue spaces, 10 lucky spaces, 5 red spaces, 3 item spaces, 3 Bowser spaces, 1 battle space, 1 chance time space, and 6 happening spaces. On the other hand, the original Yoshi's Island on the N64 had a total of 55 spaces. This is made up of 34 blue spaces, 3 red spaces, 7 happening spaces, 2 chance time spaces, 4 minigame spaces, 3 item spaces, and 2 Bowser spaces. Please don't make a drinking game out of me saying spaces, it would not end well. By comparison, there is a lot less blue spaces than Superstars compared to Mario Party 1. This is because they have made many of these blue spaces into lucky spaces. If we count both blue spaces and lucky spaces together from the spaces we can see in Superstars, they both equal 34, which is great to see Andy Cube sticking true to the original. I'm very satisfied with the fact we can only see 10 lucky spaces on this board. I can't see this impacting the game in a negative way at all. 
especially combined with the paying the swamps mechanic. And even if it did, just pay the swamps 50 coins and the entire game's economy changes. So you better get good at the mini games to earn some coins. Besides that, the spaces and the spaces quantity are very similar to the original, which is fantastic to see. But it should again be mentioned we're probably missing a space or two due to not having visibility of the entire board. There are several visual changes to the Superstars variant. However, it's still great to see the island's layout has remained the same and from a top-down view appears to still be shaped like two Yoshis, much like the original in Mario Party 1. Another change is that Bubba the Fish, who used to capture Toad in the original, has now been replaced by Cheap Chomp. It should also be mentioned that Toad is now no longer the Star Holder and has been replaced by Toadette. Bowser also now travels in his usual clown car, instead of the original's green Koopa shell. Several urchins can now also be seen floating in the water, and there's even a Hucket Crab over on the beach on Cantaloupe Island. There was no item shops in Mario Party 1. However, in Mario Party Superstars, they have added an item shop to Yoshi's Tropical Island. There is now an item shop run by Yellow Toad over on Watermelon Island. I really hope golden pipes here are rare on this board, because them being too common could kill the experience entirely. There is also no bank that we can see here, which makes sense as the original didn't have a bank space either. The boost base is also present here just like in the original and appears to be in the same spot, which is fantastic to see. The swamps are also guarding the exact same locations like the original, however, their appearance has changed from the blue to their modern grey with spikes look. Also, it's not confirmed, but I believe Toadette's star spot is here. This is due to the footage from the Japanese website. This appears to be very close to where the original star spot was, whereas Bowser's spot here looks almost identical to the original. It should also be pointed out that there's only two possible locations where the star can be in this board. However, the rest of the island appears to remain almost identical. However, this time around there is a lot more added detail. I really enjoy the sand on the island now. It actually looks like sand. And having this Yoshi drawn in the sand is a really cute touch as well. The water also looks gorgeous. You can even see the coral. Nintendo really know how to make water look good. The shipwreck in the back left corner looks so much better and detailed and there seems to be a little hut on Cantaloupe Island now instead of just bananas in the original. Besides that, the only other small changes is to do with the fruit on the islands, which all they did was add more and make it look really pretty. I want to see what I travel here. The island also now looks more 3D in Superstars. This is really noticeable as the board seems to have layers, starting from the sand slowly inclining to the top. It's a nice touch. How about you though? What do you think of the changes in Yoshi's Tropical Island and did you spot anything that I missed? And are you happy with NDQ's choice to resurrect this board? Personally, I'm very satisfied with their choice here. I really enjoyed this board growing up. I'm also planning on creating an analysis and comparison for Woody Woods as well, so expect to see that soon. And let me know if you'd like to see a detailed analysis and comparison for Space Center and Peach's birthday cake. I know those boards were announced back in June, but if I have some demand for it, I'll extend this series to those two boards as well. This wraps up the analysis and comparison for Yoshi's Tropical Island. If you enjoyed the video, remember to give it a like and subscribe. I'm also on Twitter and Twitch as well, at SwiftJar, so be sure to follow me over there. I also recently created a Discord where we can chat all Mario Party superstars, so feel free to join that as well. All the social links as well as my entire playlist of Mario Party superstars are in the description below, so check it out. Take care and I'll catch you all in the next video.